Chapter 4 focuses on the concept of voicing and consonants. It starts by defining what a consonant is and the three basic parameters of consonants, voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. The chapter then delves into the concept of voicing, defining what voiced and voiceless sounds are, and how they are produced. It covers the physiology of the larynx and vocal folds, and how they produce voicing. The chapter also discusses the phenomenon of fortis and lenus consonants, which refers to the amount of force used in producing certain consonant sounds. The larynx, also known as the voice box, is an organ located in the neck. It plays a crucial role in speech production and phonation. The larynx contains the vocal cords, which vibrate to produce sound. The position and tension of the vocal cords can be adjusted to produce different pitch and volume levels in speech. The larynx is composed of several key components, including the vocal cords, the arytenoid cartilages, the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottis. The thyroid cartilage is the largest of the laryngeal cartilages and is commonly known as the Adam's apple. It is located at the front of the larynx and protects the vocal cords. In males, the thyroid cartilage tends to be more prominent due to testosterone-induced enlargement during puberty. The cricoid cartilage is a ring-shaped cartilage located just below the thyroid cartilage. It serves as a base for the larynx and provides support for the vocal cords. The cricoid cartilage also connects to the first tracheal ring below it. The trachea, also known as the windpipe, is composed of a series of C-shaped cartilaginous rings that provide support and protection for the airway. These rings are incomplete, at the back of the trachea, to allow for flexibility and movement during breathing and swallowing. This is a cross-section of the voice box. We can see the vocal cords and arytenoid cartilages. This is how the arytenoid cartilages close and open the vocal cords. These are the possible shapes of the vocal cords. They can be wide apart, narrow, touching and vibrating, or closed. I'll get my coat becomes I'll get my coat when a glottal stop is used in place of the t in both get and coat. I'll get my coat. I'll get my coat. I'll get my coat. In words such as butter, where the t sound is not only preceded, but also followed by a vowel sound, many people consider the use of a glottal stop to be lazy speech. You can't put a better bit of butter on your knife becomes you can't put a better bit of butter on your knife when glottal stops are liberally used in lazy speech. You can't put a better bit of butter on your knife. Aggressive pulmonic airstream refers to the flow of air that moves out of the lungs and through the mouth or nose during speech. This type of airstream is used in most languages of the world and it is produced by contracting the diaphragm and the muscles of the ribcage to push air out of the lungs. During speech, the aggressive pulmonic airstream is modified by the articulators in the mouth and throat, such as the tongue, lips, and vocal cords, to produce different sounds. By controlling the flow of air and the shape of the articulators, speakers can produce a wide range of speech sounds, including vowels, consonants, and intonation patterns. The aggressive pulmonic airstream is the most common type of airstream used in human speech, but there are other types of airstreams used in some languages, such as ingressive and ejective airstreams. Here are some ingressive sounds in some dialects. Ya, ya, and nay, nay. Hi. 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 Subglottal pressure refers to the air pressure that builds up below the vocal cords in the trachea during speech. This pressure is generated by the lungs and diaphragm and plays a crucial role in producing sound during speech. When the vocal cords are adducted or brought together, the air pressure below them increases. This pressure causes the vocal cords to vibrate, producing sound waves. The subglottal pressure provides the energy needed to sustain the vibration of the vocal cords, which is essential for speech. The quality of sound produced during speech is affected by various factors, including subglottal pressure. High subglottal pressure can result in louder and more intense sounds, while low subglottal pressure can result in weaker and softer sounds. The vibration of the vocal cords affects the intensity, frequency, and quality of sound produced during speech. Intensity refers to the loudness of sound and is affected by the force of air passing through the vocal cords. 
Frequency refers to the pitch of sound and is determined by the rate of vocal cord vibration. Quality refers to the unique characteristics of sound that make it distinguishable from other sounds. Intensity refers to the loudness of sound and is affected by the force of air passing through the vocal cords. When the vocal cords are tightened, they vibrate more rapidly and produce a higher frequency of sound, resulting in a louder sound. Conversely, when the vocal cords are relaxed, they vibrate more slowly and produce a lower frequency of sound, resulting in a softer sound. Frequency refers to the pitch of sound and is determined by the rate of vocal cord vibration. When the vocal cords vibrate rapidly, they produce a high-pitched sound, and when they vibrate slowly, they produce a low-pitched sound. Quality refers to the unique characteristics of sound that make it distinguishable from other sounds. The quality of sound produced by the vocal cords is influenced by the shape and size of the vocal tract, which includes the mouth, nose, and throat. The vocal tract acts as a resonator, amplifying and modifying the sound produced by the vocal cords to create different vowel and consonant sounds. Some of the characteristics include harsh, breathy, murmured, and creaky. A plosive is a type of consonant sound that involves creating a total stricture in the vocal tract by moving one or two articulators against each other, preventing any air from escaping. This compressed air is then released, potentially producing a loud noise known as plosion if the air is still under pressure. There may be voicing during some or all of the plosive articulation. A complete description of a plosive includes four phases, the closing phase, compression phase, release phase, and post-release phase, each involving specific movements of the articulators. English has six plosive consonants. The glottal plosive occurs frequently but it is of less importance, since it is usually just an alternative pronunciation in certain contexts. Plosives have different places of articulation. The plosives P and B are bilabial since the lips are pressed together. T and D are alveolar since the tongue blade is pressed against the alveolar ridge. Normally the tongue does not touch the front teeth as it does in the dental plosives found in many languages. The plosives in the word car and get are velars, the back of the tongue is pressed against the area where the hard palate ends, and the soft palate begins. The plosives in the words pack, ten, and car are always voiceless, and the one in the words bad and dad are sometimes fully voiced, sometimes partly voiced, and sometimes voiceless. Here are some examples for plosives in initial positions. The words pot, top, and kit. Print, trip, and crack. Speak, star, and skip. Here are some examples for plosives in medial positions. The words report, detect, and record. Deeper, detail, and record. Here are some examples for plosives in final positions. The words hip, eat, leak, and leak. The voicing of plosives can be controversial. In initial and final position, these plosives are scarcely voiced and any voicing they may have does not have perceptual importance. Some phoneticians propose using different terms for these voiceless and voiced sounds, with the former being called fortis, meaning strong, and the latter being called lenus, meaning weak, because the former are thought to be produced with more force than the latter. This table shows the fortis and lenus consonants according their place of articulation. This is the next chapter. Go there, when in the mood. And if you have an interest in phonetics and phonology, consider subscribing to my channel and turning on the notification bell to stay updated on our latest content. Describe the production of the word, goat. Stop the video until you finish. Then, check your answer. It is normal to have a different way of writing.
Describe the production of the word, ape. Stop the video until you finish. Then, check your answer. It is normal to have a different way of writing. Transcribe these words. Stop the video until you finish. Then, check your answer. At this point, try to use the British transcription.